Today I'm going to look at the four aces in the tarot in particular. This applies to any tarot deck with four aces, sure do. So here's the thing, to do it you really need this book, the Book of Toth, and you also need this book, seven, seven, it was 777. I've lost the cover on this, you can see how well it's been used. Now to understand how the uh, this book works, there are uh, tables in here that essentially cover the 78 cards, but they do it in a particular way. And here, if you look very closely, this is the first page. Uh, you can see the top 10 rows, rows in there. And we're looking at the first row in particular because that covers the four aces. Um, I go into this more on, on Super Tower as well. Here we are, here's the page. Look closely. It says the four aces there. <coughs> now, Alistair Crowley wrote about four aces in a particular way, and they're found in his book of Toss. Where are we? Well, the four aces, it's page 177 of the Book of Toth, my version here, as you can see it's well worn as well. So to start with, let's just look at the four aces and see what what you know about the four aces. Okay, so here they are. So we have Ace of Wands. What's that mean? Ace of Swords. Ace of Discs. And the Ace of Cups. So I bet when you looked at those cards, you looked at the symbols and you sort of thought, it's the Ace of Cups, that's water. Ace of Wands, that's fire. Ace of Swords, air. And the Ace of Discs, that's earth. The problem is that's wrong. <laughs> it's the Aces and you might also think that the, so the next cards in the sequence are going to be the two of discs and the three and then the fours, then the fives up to the tens. But technically and actually, the aces are not part of the minor arcana. They're actually part of the court cards. It's a strange kind of thing that's going on. And to do this, we'll, we'll go through the things that Alistair Crowley says about the aces, just to give you an idea. So the first thing he says is the aces represent the root of the four elements. It's the root. It is not actually the elements themselves. They are quite above and distinct from the other small cards in the same way as Ketra is, is to be symbolized only by the top most points of the Yod Tetragrammaton. So Tetragrammaton is Yod Hey Bar Hey, which is fire, water, air, and earth. So he's saying the aces are on the point of the Yod, and the Yod is almost a point anyway. And it represents Keto. Keto is the crown, the topmost point of the tree of life. And Keto is outside the elements. Okay, so he's making this thing that the aces are outside the system. It's a very important point. Then he says, in these cards is no real manifestation of the element in its material form. Again, there's something. But you can't say it's fire and action, water or air or earth, any of these things. They're just a, a flavour, um, something almost intangible that's going on there. And then he says they form a link between the small cards and the princesses, the rule of heaven around the North Pole. This is where it gets really cosmic because we normally see these things in a small way, but actually, He's saying that aces form a vast cosmic kind of realm, and they and they control the four quarters around the pole star. So that's essentially ruling time, because in 24 hours we'll have gone round all those 360 degrees in 24 hours. We do it every single day. It's a marker of time, the aces. How do we know this? And then he says something interesting. So to measure time, you need a meridian. 
and of course for us we have Greenwich which is just down the road actually the line the Greenwich line runs just down the road from where I live and it's the point from where time is measured GMT all around the world so you know where do you are around the world your plus or minus GMT and then he says the meridian is the great pyramid the meridian is the great pyramid this is an interesting thing so the occult meridian is marked from the great pyramid this is a lot to do with Crowley's book of the law which his wife Rose Kelly received in the great pyramid in 1904 for the book of the law so he's also taking something and making a marker that to change time and transform things on a cosmic scale you also use the great pyramid and it's the four races and the four princesses as well so then he says the order goes fire water air and earth and this um, so the ones that cover Asia so that's going anti-clockwise not clockwise so then he talks about to make this relationship cl clear one they go a little into the symbol of the pentagram or shield of David the pentagram is the one with the five points his star um, the top point will be the aces okay and the other four points will be the elements it represents spirit ruling the four elements and is thus a symbol of the triumph of man so then he's bringing this idea that man is spirit he's not the four elements so whenever we look at the court cards and um, we sort of try and associate a, a, a particular type of person we are limiting ourselves but when we go to the aces they were into spirit which is man itself man is spirit is freedom it's a kasha which is another name for spirit okay so it says the idea of spirit is very difficult to grasp, it is. Um, the letter Shin, which is the letter of fire, has to do double by representing spirits as well. Now, in the, in the tables for Libra 7-7, um, it goes, there are 32 parts. And then there's two extra, 31 bids and 32 bids. 32 bids because when we look at the Hebrew alphabet and in the system of the Sefi Yetzria, we have 12 signs of the zodiac, 7 planets, and 3 mother cards, which represent the elements air, water, and fire. Earth is missing, as is spirit. To get round this, in the Golden Dawn system, they added two dual classifications, if you like. One is 31 bis, uh, 32 bis is for uh, the universe, it represents Earth and Saturn. And there's 31 bits, which is fire and spirit. I might have got those two back to front. But anyway, so that's where it comes from. So he's balancing up the elements in this whole kind of system. So now we're going to sort of take things a little bit further. And it's this is the whole point about a cash or a space, is that you can't define it. It's your space. The space is things you put things in. <laughs> Not this is what space is. So this is where this idea of, of this, the aces of taking you somewhere else really takes hold in the next part because he says it is very remarkable that the tablet of spirits in the knocking system is the key to all mischief as in the Hindu system Akash is the egg of darkness there's two things there Akash is the egg of darkness the, 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 there's an egg, the symbol for and the tattvas for spirits is an egg and um, in one of Earl Crowley's writings, he says it's a uh, the, the wizard Amalantra, I think, says it's all in the egg. Now, he also talks about the tablet of spirit, which is actually the tablet of union. Now, this is where you find out where the aces really belong. If they don't belong in the minor arcana, and they're not major cards, you're only left with the court cards. And what happens is, with the tablet of union, it's a system, it's a table of four by five squares, okay? So we have the four elements, and each of the elements in Enochian has only four letters in it. So that, so, that, so it's XR, H coma, Nanta, and Baton. So it's air, water, XR, Nanta is earth, and Baton is fire. 
And if we take the first three letters, first letter of each says E H N B, that is the word for spirit. So E H N B covers the four races. Okay. So what are the other sixteen squares? They are the court cards. And you go from knight, queen, prince, and princess. Now, four times five is twenty. 20 is the number of cash, which is a symbol of the wheel, which is also the wheel of the tarot. So we're kind of saying, in that tablet of union, we also have the entire system of the tarot. The other interesting thing about 20, about, apart from other things as well, is that it is, these, it is also the sum of the name Yod, which is both Yod, Val, Dalet, Yod is 10, Val is 6. Dallas is 4, add them up, we come to 20 again. And we said it right at the start, Yod is the point. It's the point above the Yod. I think there's just one other thing he said here. So then he says, on the other hand, spirit represents Keta. So we've gone back again to the first line where he says, the other is the same as the way as Keta is said to be symbolized only by the topmost point of the Yod of Tetragrammaton. Kind of, you know, the tetragrammaton, the four manifest modes of manifestation of tetragrammaton are in the court cards as well. Fire, water, air, and earth. So the last point he makes is the point to remember is that, both in their appearance and in their meaning, the aces are not the elements themselves, but the seeds of those elements. Now, the thing about the seed, so the seed is, is a point. It's a bindu. It's a seed. We have things called in the Hindu system the, the, the bija mantras, the seed mantras. It's from these seeds everything comes from. So we're saying a chemistry of space. You can't define it. And then you have the seed. And the thing about seeds is <laughs> you don't know unless you can do a DNA analysis or a real expert. You don't know what that seed will turn into. It's just a tiny point. Now there's one other thing about this whole system of the aces. It's that to so in a sense you might say, well why are there four aces then? Because you don't need them. I mean one ace would suffice. <laughs> but actually, you know, we still need four aces in order to discriminate or differentiate between the four systems. And here's the key, you know, this thing about symbols, they don't work. If you just went by the symbols, you just have to say, well, there's a cup on the ice well, that's water, isn't it? And there's that wand, well, that must be fire. The disc is the earth, and the sword is the earth. This is where symbolism is completely useless in understanding. So now we've, we've gone from thinking, oh, well, the ace, the ace of cups is a birth or something, the ace of Swords is an idea. Ace of Wands, beginning of some, some new action. The Ace of Discs, I can't remember, I don't bother with it. Um, it's that you suddenly have this entire cosmological system, the Aces uniting the Western system of the Tatlas. You have the Pentagram system, which all comes into, of course, the banishing rituals and things like this. You have the Enochian system, the Tablet of Union, this whole thing of the Tablet of the Union, the Union. It unifies things. And then it has this whole system of connecting with the princesses to the pole star, the point about which our planet seems to revolve around. And this whole idea of time and changing time um, through the meridian of the Great Pyramid as well. It's just an awesome kind of system of magic and spirituality that is entirely lost when we just think, oh, the aces, that's the element, that's the basic of the four elements, isn't it?